Well, thank you. I appreciate everybody being here. I just want to uh, thank uh, uh, Congressman Pfluger for introducing his uh, his bill uh, on our uh, LNG exports. Uh, I want to thank uh, uh, I want to thank leadership. Uh, I want to thank Speaker uh, Speaker Johnson, um, Leader Scalise, uh, Whip Emmer, and uh, Chairwoman uh, Stefanik uh, for keeping this uh, oil and gas issue at the top of the thing. But I want to talk about something else today. What I want to talk about is w in regards to the her report that just came out. I think this is on the mind of a lot of Americans right now. Uh, I want to just state the obvious. If you're not cognitively fit to stand trial or to answer accusations against you, you're obviously not cognitively fit to be the president, our commander in chief, and our head of state. And I, I think that, you know, we, uh, we we have to, at this particular point, we have to start asking the hard questions. I'm glad to see that some of the press is starting to do that. Uh, you know, I've been saying individually for a long time since he was candidate Joe Biden uh, that uh, this man's not cognitively fit to be our, our head of state and our commander in chief. Uh, we've had lots of evidence of that since then. Uh, a lot of people are starting to see that. Now we have the her reports coming out, which is a completely different angle on this, an objective report uh, from a member from the, from an appointee of his own DOJ, from his own administration that's saying that he's not cognitively cognitively fit uh, to do his job. Uh, and uh, I think that, you know, when, he, when the president got up the other day and, and tried to speak to the nation, he just reiterated and reinforced the idea that uh, we are in trouble in this country right now from a leadership standpoint. Look, you know, this LNG thing is a big issue for us. Uh, you know, I grew up in the oil field in West Texas. I know how important this is. It's a national security issue. It's an issue for our economy. Uh, it's it's, it's going to punish uh, hardworking blue collar folks in this country. But, uh, you know, whether it's this LNG issue, whether it's uh, our, our disaster at the border, whether it's the disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan, the crime in our cities, uh, all of the other issues uh, that, that, that have just been an absolute disaster during the Biden administration, what it says to us is that Joe Biden is probably most likely not making these decisions. We know this at this particular point. There are radical uh, extremists in the West Wing, whether it's climate extremists or uh, whether it's the, the globalists that are, that are making a lot of these decisions. These decisions are not coming from President Biden. These are coming from other folks within the White House with different agendas, with agenda that's not America first, that's not in the best interest of this country. So I just want to let everybody know that we are going to continue to make this an issue. I will be introducing a, another letter today. This will be the fifth letter that I've introduced, this, that I've sent to the president. This will go directly to President Biden. It will CC every member of his cabinet. Cabinet, and it will insist, it will insist that he come forward and be honest with us about his physical and his mental capabilities and his exam. He's supposed to be getting a, a, a physical exam done here in just a few months, his annual physical. Uh, they've already indicated that there will not be a cognitive test associated with that. I think if there was ever, ever a time that we need a cognitive test for a sitting president of the United States, it's right now. And as you remember, President Trump got one. I think he set the precedent. It was a large part because of the press, uh, his insistence that he have that included as part of this physical exam. I would like to see that same type of enthusiasm and insistence from the press right now that President Biden submit to a cognitive exam as part of his physical exam. And if he thinks he's fit to lead this country, prove it to us with some objective data that says so. And with that, I just want to turn it over to uh, my friend and chairman, Mark Green from Tennessee. Thank you.